tutorials online about skin retouching and how to retouch skin in Photoshop but I guarantee that this is the best skin retouching tutorial that you're going to be finding online or on YouTube because in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys every single step every single secret every single detail about skin retouching color grading dodging and burning eye and teeth whitening and how to import and export your images so you're going to start from the importing the image to the exporting the image so that it doesn't have any change in color and it has no a very or any faults after you have retouched so let's kick in and we start editing this image and before i go ahead i'm ronix from ronix photography welcome to this brand new and best skin retouching tutorial i have a reason that's why i'm calling it the best you know i've been dropping so many tutorials about skin retouching but i felt like i want to give you guys every single detail that you need to know every single tip that you need to know and every single tiniest bit you need to know about skin retouching color grading eye and teeth whitening and let's kick in and we start learning and this is going to be a very beautiful interactive and an enjoyable tutorial about skin retouching so we're going to start by importing the image into photoshop so for this case we're going to be starting with how to color grade a raw image so that we can get back those very beautiful and vibrant colors but if at all you shoot in jpeg and not raw you're going to be kind of a step ahead of us then we're going to find you in front after we have opened the image into Photoshop. So if at all you shoot in JPEG, don't worry or don't mind about that because we are going to be at the very same step and I'll be alerting you about that very step so that we can uh, join and continue with the learning process all together. So in order to import your image, I have a new version of Photoshop that is, it is not the latest but I have Adobe Photoshop 2020. And if at all you have other versions, you can simply import your image by coming right here to File. And you can simply come to Open. And when you click on Open, it is going to bring your uh, storage device or the different folders where your image is maybe stored. Or you can simply, if at all you have a newer version, you can simply come right here to Open. And it is going to bring... Uh, the folder where my images are and for this case we are going to be editing this very image so i'm going to, after selecting it and it's highlighted come and click open just like that so since this is a raw image and i already did some adjustments on it i'm just going to click right here and i'm just going to uh, reset the image so that we can start uh, from the very start so you can see we are now in the camera filter so if at all you have the plugin installed into your photoshop maybe if at all you have photoshop cc when you open a raw image it's going to open up your camera and this version i'm using is 12.4 so above here we have the image details i hope you guys can see these are the image details and i shot it using a canon 6d camera so you have to also understand that this is an 8-bit image. So after understanding all that, right now we're going to start color grading this image so that it can look like the JPEG image or the way you are looking at it at the camera screen when we are trying to take this very portrait. And this image is for a friend of mine. She's called Natasha. And this was her wedding day. And this is the image we're going to be using. So after doing that, we have this basic adjustment option so under basic adjustment usually for the images i've been retouching i usually first of all calibrate my image yeah so depending on the type of images you shoot and uh, the picture profile you shoot in we have various picture profiles but for my canon 6d these are the available picture profiles that i have in my camera so you have to be knowing that so right here we have profile so you have to come under profile or camera calibration to start calibrating the image so calibration is basically having 
an image or a video to look or to have the colors as you would want them to be. So basically that is how I can explain calibration. So that is what we're going to be doing in this very step. So come under profile, you can see profile. So when you click on it, we have various profiles. So different cameras, we have different camera profiles. So we have maybe faithful, standard, vivid, landscape, portrait. So for this case, Adobe Color is going to be the default for all Adobe softwares. Even in Lightroom, you'll have Adobe Color. So for my case, I shoot in landscape. So I'm just going to come and click on landscape and you can see you have started getting those really nice and rich colors in the image if at all I'm to zoom in by holding down Ctrl or Command Plus to zoom into the image and to zoom out is the same method you have to use. Ctrl Plus, Ctrl Minus. Plus is zooming in, then Ctrl Minus, zooming out. So after doing so, we have the basic adjustments right here. So I hope you guys can see them. So for this image, you can see the highlights were really blown out. If at all, I am to zoom in right here. You can see we don't have these highlights looking really nice and uh, pretty. So I'm just going to zoom out. So I want to gain back the details right here. It is the only advantage of shooting in RAW, guys. RAW is really amazing. can recover so much information in the image. Remember, a RAW file has so much information embedded in it unlike a jpeg file which is going to be really compressed and you have no details at all if at all you blow them out or you under expose so usually if at all i want to regain uh, the highlights in the image i come to the highlight option i i hold down and move it towards the left hand side all the way because i want to regain back the detail so if at all i show you guys a quick before and after you can see uh, this is the before we only have white here but when I come to the after, you can see you have already started gaining back this beautiful detail right on uh, the dress of the model. So I'm just going to zoom out. Then also come to my whites and in a bit to gain back my, uh, my details, I move the whites also down towards uh, the left hand side. So I'm just going to go with a negative 63. And after you have done so, you have to keep on checking on your progress i feel like this image has those nice colors but remember when we are calibrating the image it really gave us that kind of vibrant feel and the image looks uh, really oversaturated so you're just going to come right to uh, the vibrance and you're just going to knock down the vibrance like that it is not too much it is just a subtle reduction so you can see the before and the after. Then you can notice that in this image, as we're doing all this, it is really adding so much uh, red color. You can see uh, the before and the after. We have so much magentas or red color added into this image. You know, if I told you shoot in uh, with a Canon camera, Canon, Canon usually embeds some kind of magentas in all the images, if at all I should say, because when I scroll all the way up, you're going to notice that uh, my tint is already set to plus 9. I haven't played around with this slider, but you can see it has already been pushed to plus 9, which I really don't want and I'm not comfortable with. So, in order to reduce on the amount of magenta, as you can see, this slider has moved like 9 stops towards the magenta side. So, I want to reduce on the magenta. So, you have to notice that in order to reduce on a given color, you have to go with the opposite of that a specific color. I'm just going to come to the tint option and I'm going to move towards the opposite of the color I want to eliminate. And as I'm doing so, you're going to notice that we are getting rid of that kind of red color in the image. So right now we have gotten rid of the red color or the redness in the image. So it is time to do all the other adjustments onto this image. I'm going to come to my contrast and I'm just going to increase it to around a five like that. Then I'm going to come to my blacks. So the thing about blacks is you can add blacks always intensify the blacks in the image and they also add contrast into 
the image so i'm just going to come right here under the blacks and i'm just going to knock it down slightly I'll, i'm not going to take it all the way down because you can see the image is looking really uh we have lost out the details right in the background and we can't see uh, the beautiful contrast that we initially had so to reset an option just double click on this slider and it's going to reset so i'm just going to move it slightly and the thing about black so when you pull it all the way up you're going to have a pale image so you don't want to do that or that to happen to your image so i'm just going to move it slightly to around uh negative 11 then i'm just going to move my shadows to get rid of the shadows in the image you can see but i'm not going to take it all the way down because if i if i take it all the way up you're going to notice that it is going to do the same effect that we had for the blacks and we don't want that to happen so i'm just going to move it slightly to around five then i'm also going to add a little bit of clarity to add uh, more detail into the image so i'm just going to add a little bit of that then i'm also going to add a little bit of dehaze to this image and right now the image is really set to be retouched in photoshop so this is all i do for adjusting my raw images in camera raw before i can start retouching them in photoshop so after you have done so we have three options right here i hope you can see cancel done and open i know you can click done if at all you feel like you have done everything but that is not the option you are going to go in for because when you click done it is not going to open the image into photoshop so come right to open like it says open yeah just click open So it is going to take a few seconds to open into Photoshop. And here we are right now. So you're going to be learning about skin retouching, blemish removal, dodging and burning, color grading and exporting the image uh, after doing everything on it. So what I'm going to do basically, I'm going to first of all crop the image. The reason I try, I want to crop these images to get rid of this uh, useless space right here and removing uh, this highlighter right here because this highlighter helped me to remove the shadow from the neck area and i would advise if at all you're a beauty photographer or an aspiring beauty photographer you should get a waistcoat highlighter because it's going to be helping you to eliminate shadows beneath uh, the chin or around the neck area of the model and enough of that so we want to crop the image and in order to crop the image you're going to come and get our crop tool so this is the crop tool so a crop tool enables us to uh, maybe resize the image to have more emphasis on the details that really matter and maybe to straighten up the image so i'm just going to come and i'm going to uh, first of all straighten the image you can see this arrow right on the corner if at all i hold down the left click button on the mouse and I just move it towards a given side I'll be straightening up as the image you can see what I'm basically doing so I think this is fine so if at all I want to get rid of this space I'm just going to click and hold down on the edge and move it towards uh, the size I want to or the option I want to get rid of and I forgot to tell you guys, the crop ratio I'm using is a 4 to 5 ratio. So you can just come and set your crop ratio from this side right here. So come and just click 4 to 5. The reason for that is because I crop these images in 4 to 5 or 8 by 10 ratio. Because I usually post these images onto Instagram because I want the image to occupy the whole screen of maybe... A person who is going to be viewing this image or maybe their mobile screens or mobile phone my mobile phone sorry so this is why i crop the images in such a ratio and if at all you're putting it on maybe your whatsapp status whatsapp is going to be doing very a minimal compression on the image because it is already resized and it is not going to be having to 
kind of fit the image on the overall screen and compress it so that is why we have to crop the images in this ratio i'm going to come and hit enter on the keyboard to approve my crop settings so right now the image is uh, ready and uh, very ripe to be retouched so before retouching we want first of all uh, remove the blemishes or skin imperfections in the image let me get my arrow tool you can see these options right here uh, the blemishes sorry you can see those blemishes in this very image so just want to clean up the image yeah and in order to clean up the image you're just going to come right down here and click on this new layer icon so you're just going to click to create a new a blank layer that is going to be having or containing the blemishes from this very image the reason for doing that is because we don't want to work directly on the background because we just need a backup layer in case we do maybe an, an error or a mistake we don't have to re-edit the image in camera and import it since we are working straight on the background layer so after creating your new blank layer we're just going to name that layer i'm just going to hit caps and i'm going to name that layer blemishes so after doing so we're going to zoom out by hitting command minus to zoom out the image so after doing so we are going to come right here so for removing blemishes we have a couple of tools you can use for removing blemishes from your images first of all we have the spot healing brush tool so this tool basically when you click on the spot healing brush tool we have the settings right there and you can see when I, I selected the spot healing brush tool uh, it is showing like it is a cross I hope you can see this cross right here on the left hand side you can see that tiny cross the reason for that is because you always have to turn off your caps key yeah make sure you always turn off your caps key so in order to do that just come and turn it off so if at all i increase on the size of my spot healing brush tool by using the brackets on the keyboard so the right brackets are uh, all the closing bracket increases on the size of the spot healing brush tool and the opening bracket reduces or the left bracket reduces on the size of the tool so you're going to zoom into this image so right above here we have the settings for our spot healing brush tool so in order, in order to move your image or hover around after zooming in your image hold down the space bar key and click and just move like that so right above we have the settings for our spot healing brush tool so make sure you come the settings and the hardness is we are going to be using a hardness of uh, 100 percent and we are going to make sure content aware is selected then this is where it is going to really help you make sure sample alias is checked or selected so the reason for doing this is because we want uh, this tool the spot healing brush tool to sample from both the background while pasting on this new blank layer remember this layer is blank it is where we, it is where we are basically going to be uh, dropping our blemishes after clearing them or removing them from the image so i hope you guys are really paying close attention because blemish removal is one of the most challenging tools in skin retouching make sure i really have your attention right now i know you may be distracted but i just need your close and maximum attention so we're going to re uh, re reduce on the size of our spot healing brush tool so when you're removing blemishes make sure the tool you're using is slightly bigger than the blemish make sure it is not uh, too big make sure you don't uh, make or select a tool as big as this to remove a blemish as big as small as this this is going to be really awkward and it's going to 
be creating those uneven patterns on your images so make sure it is really uh, slightly bigger than the blemish so for this case we're going to be using at uh, this size so how the spot healing brush tool you just uh, click over the blemish to get rid of it so basically that is how uh, this tool works for blemish removal so what it is, it is doing basically photoshop is automatically uh, copying a uh, skin texture from a clean area or the area that doesn't have a blemish and basically replacing it over the blemish when you click on it i hope i'm making sense so just basically come and click over those blemishes you want to eliminate from the image and this is really a time saving tool if at all you don't have uh, so much time at disposal to uh, clean up your images or remove those blemishes or skin imperfections so it is basically a matter of just uh, clicking and eliminating uh, those uh, blemishes i hope you can see what we have just done in just a few seconds of using uh, the spot healing brush tool you can see uh, the before and the after before after so we have just cleaned up the image so after doing so i want to show you guys the very second tool for uh, removing blemishes in photoshop so that tool is going to be so if at all i come under the spot healing brush tool and simply right click we have the healing brush tool so how this works is the same way the clone sample tool works so you have to make sure it is uh, bigger than the blemish as usual uh, as usual sorry to a slip of a tongue so make sure it is slightly bigger than the blem the blemish then come and select so in this case photoshop is not going to be helping us to uh, select from a clean area or the area that doesn't have a blemish so we have to manually do this and before you can manually do so come and make sure aligned is selected the source is aligned then come and select current and below because we want to uh, sample from these two layers so that's that's why you have to select both layers by choosing the current and blow option so if at all you want to clean up hold down the alternate key alt is alt so that button is really important uh, to uh, use when you're removing blemishes using the uh, healing brush tool so hold down the alt key and click on a clean area to copy that a uh, nice skin and just click on the blemish to get rid of it so you have to uh, hold down the alternate key click on a clean area to copy and now release the alt key and now click over the blemish to get rid of it so alt copy from a clean area release and click yeah alt like that so basically that is how the healing brush tool and that is how it works when you're removing or cleaning up the uh, blemishes from the image then the other third tool that works basically like a healing brush tool is the clone sample tool so when you select the clone sample tool make sure opacity is 100 and the flow 100 align the selected and you have to sample the current and below layers so increase on the size of your spot or your clone sample tool sorry and hold down the alternate key click on a clean area or a sample you want to replace the blemish with and now click over the blemish to eliminate or get rid of it so it, is, it works basically like the uh, healing uh, brush tool so for this case i just want to save time uh, to remove the blemishes so i'm just going to come and i'm going to right click and select my spot healing brush tool sample all layers is selected and you on your blemishes layer just come and dab over at the blemishes to uh, eliminate them or get rid of them so you can even draw a line to get rid of those kind of lines in the face or wrinkles 
are in the face area or maybe those smile lines so basically this is uh, what we are basically going to be doing with the spot healing brush tool and remember blemish removal is going to really contribute a bigger percentage uh, on your images or on your uh, retouched images that's why you have to take a good amount of minutes or uh, trying to clean up the images because uh, the blemishes you forget in the images are going to determine uh, on what people are going to judge whether you're a serious uh, retoucher or uh, you're not a very serious uh, retoucher. So for my friends in Nigeria that always uh, have questions about skin retouching, I really hope you guys are paying close attention to uh, this specific tutorial because I always get questions about how I do I uh, retouch my images so I decided to make this a uh, really a very simple and easy to follow along a uh, tutorial so that you guys can really benefit and improve on your overall uh, skin retouching process on your images and this is going to help you get a uh, more booking so you are done removing or cleaning as uh, the image so basically what I want to do, I want to show you guys the before and after for blemishes. You can see the before and the after. Let me zoom in, command plus or control plus. You can see the before and the after for uh, the blemish remover. And the image already looks beautiful and amazing. So right now we want to merge these two layers. And in order to merge them, you can simply uh, press shift ctrl e or shift command e shift ctrl e for windows or shift command e for mac to uh, merge these two layers into one so right now we're going to be learning about skin retouching yeah i hope i now have your attention and it is the ma major emphasis for this very tutorial so basically what is skin retouching let me just put it plain and clear skin retouching is more of evening out the skin tones uh, to really look balanced and have a smooth transitions uh, amongst the skin tones to have a really beautiful image at the end of it all yeah so if it at all we even out this you can see we have and even skin tones or some kind of blotchiness in the skin area so if at all we even out those skin tones we are going to be having a retouched image so that is basically what skin retouching is all about so in this case we are going to be learning about a frequency separation so what is frequency separation frequency separation i know there are so many stories about a frequency separation how to use maybe a lasso tool mixer brush so you shouldn't worry if at all you have been getting all those tutorials wrong and you have always failed to understand those tutorials in this tutorial you're going to be learning about everything you have always wanted to know about a frequency separation so basically frequency separation is basically what we know it or what we know about it is this technique is used to retouch skin that is uh, the overall thing that we know about that is the most popular technique for skin retouching but can also be used for maybe retouching clothes and things like that so for this case you're going to be doing skin retouching so it is a, a skin retouching technique that divides the image into two so it gets uh, the skin tones, it puts them in one layer and also gets the uh, skin textures or the outlines and it puts them on a different layer. So we're going to be working on the, the skin tones separately and also the skin texture, texture, sorry, textures separate so that we can get the best out of this image. So that when you combine both layers, you're going to be ending up with a retouched image that is going to be looking very nice and beautiful. 
So in order to do that, we're going to come right here to the background. Remember, remember we want to create two layers. Yeah, we just want to create two layers from the background layer. So without the background layer, we're just going to create two more layers by hitting shift. Sorry, we are hitting command J twice. So if at all I hit control or command J twice, we are going to be having two layers. Or you can simply uh, duplicate the layer by just dragging it to this new layer icon to make a copy out of your background layer. So what we are going to be doing basically, we are going to be naming these layers. So before I can name these layers, I want to show you guys the reason as to why we name these layers the way they are. The reason for na naming these layers, uh, let me first of all uh, name this layer low, or some people prefer to call it uh, the color, sorry about that, color, or other people call it maybe uh, skin tones. Then, uh, so the top layer is of course going to be our high, or some people call it uh, textures. So if I told you come across high frequency and low frequency, this is basically what they try to uh, be meaning. The reason I try these are uh, named in such a way is because if at all I zoom in this image, you're going to notice that the textures are almost protruding out of your screen. You can see the textures, you can actually kind of feel the textures meaning the textures are slightly on top of the image. That's why this texture is on top of the color. And you can see that the color is slightly inside or beneath the textures. That's why the color or low frequency layer is below the high frequency layer in the frequency separation layer creation group. So we're going to zoom out. So I hope you guys have really understood that technique. I'm going to come and I'm going to click on this eye icon to hide the visibility of the high or texture layer. Then I'm going to select the low frequency layer. So selecting this layer, you can see when I select it and I try to zoom in by holding down command plus or control plus on the keyboard, you can see this layer still has a textures. So what we want to do, we only want to remain with the colors or the skin tones in this very layer. Like it suggests we only want to remain with color or the skin tones, but with no textures at all. So I'm going to come right here under filter. You can see this option and come to blur. I hope so come to filter, then come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So when you come to Gaussian blur, I know your radius may be different. So it is going to be at zero, yeah, around 0 0.1 or zero, whatever. So the thing what what we are going to be doing basically is we are going to click on this zoom tool. You have to zoom out. Okay, this is our image. This is how the image is looking like. So make sure your preview is on because we want to see the effect as we are adjusting the radius. So we're going to zoom in this very image like this. Then after zooming it, zooming in, we are going to uh, make sure we look for the area that seems to have more skin textures than the rest of the skin of this very model. So for this case, we're going to go with this uh, specific area. You can look for an area. So we're going to go with this area of the forehead. So you can hold down to hover or move around. So we have to move this slider until we have completely lost out on the textures right here. So when, the reason for selecting the area that has more prominent textures is because uh, when you we get rid of those more prominent textures, the other textures in the image are not going to be seen at all. 
so we are going to start moving this slowly as we are looking at this option right here or this window or the Gaussian blur window so just move it as you're looking right here on the preview move as you're looking right there move so we're just going to move as we are looking right there so we can still notice these textures so we're just going to move just one step forward so i think at around six but uh six i can still notice some little texture right here so meaning you have to be looking right here and on the image so i'm just going to move until it has also completely uh, been lost out so i think i want put seven so at seven i've lost out even this tiny spot which was right here so after I have to zoom and see if at all it has been lost out after doing so come and hit ok so you're going to notice that your image is looking really out of focus and is really blurry but you can still uh, notice or see the structures in uh, the image and you can recognize them so make sure you blur out the textures but you can still notice the details in the image that is the trick i have to tell you guys it is not more about cramming my gush and blur radius or that radius and applying it on the images each and every time no it is not that so after doing so this is where remember when i was showing you guys the 8 bit in image or the option which was right below in our camera raw filter this is where it happens or the difference between an 8-bit image and a 16-bit image uh, for frequency separation so for this case we have we have this option right on the image it has 8 so if I told your image is a 16-bit image you're going to be having 16 right here RGB stroke 16 so come and activate this uh, high frequency layer and select it so the reason I was showing you guys that is because I want to show you guys different values you have to be using for uh, an 8-bit image and a 16-bit image. So select your high frequency layer or texture layer and activate it by hitting on this eye icon. Then come right to image and come right down to apply image. So for an 8-bit image you're going to be uh, come and select your low frequency layer the reason for doing that is because we want to steal the textures that we hid under this layer so that we can put them in the texture or high frequency layer that that's why you have selected the low frequency layer because it is hiding our tones in the blur radius that we applied using the Gaussian blur then come under a blending mode and select subtract Make sure the opacity is 100%, scale 2 and offset 128. The reason for this is because when you divide the colors in the RGB, we have 256. When you divide it by 2, you get 128 and that is going to be like a 50% of those colors, meaning our textures are going to be on a gray kind of layer. So if at all I zoom in, so make sure your preview is on to have these results the way they are. If at all I zoom in, you're going to notice that uh, we have textures in this image and it is lacking colors or skin tones. So I'm going to zoom out. So these are the settings you have to be using for an 8-bit image. So for a 16-bit image, you're going to make sure you select the low frequency layer as usual. Then come and change the blending mode from uh, subtract. To add so when you select add make sure your opacity is 100% scale is 2 offset at 0 so this is where the deferring happens the blending for a 16-bit image is add and the scale is 2 and the offset at 0 then come and select or click on invert and you get back the same results that we had for the 8-bit method for are getting the textures so this is an 8-bit image I'm just going to come and reset 
So low frequency layer 8 bit image is subtract. Scale is 2. Offset 128 like that. And make sure you turn off the invert. And you get back the textures right, right there. I hope I have made sense. And always make sure your preview is on, guys. Always make sure that the preview is on. Come and click OK right there. So when you click OK, you're going to look at the image and it's looking really weird. And we have lost out everything. And the image is on this kind of gray kind of layer. But that shouldn't be your worry. Because I'm going to be showing you guys how to regain or get back that beautiful image that we really had. So come right here on where you see normal and ch change the blending mode from normal and scroll all the way down to uh, look for linear light. So when you click on linear light, the image will be back, I guarantee, unless you have followed a wrong method or procedure. So this is the image we have right now. So we want to prove that we have successfully uh, divided the frequencies in the image or divided the image into two. So what we are going to be doing, we are going to select both layers, control and click on both layers. And now click control G, command G on the keyboard G for girl, or you can simply drag both layers to this folder like icon to put them in a group. Then we are going to double click right there. And now change, uh, rename that to, I'm going to put on caps, a frequency separation. So always make sure you maybe name or rename your layers for purposes of being uniform and you don't get lost during the course of retouching your images. So we want to prove that we have successfully divided the frequencies in this image. So if at all I turn this on and off, you can see there's no difference at all between the background layer or the original image and our frequency separation. So meaning we have successfully conducted our frequency separation on this very image. So come and click on the eye icon to activate it. Then click on this drop down icon and you'll open your group. Then come and select the texture or high frequency layer. Then come under adjustments and click on a black and white like that. So when you do come and select that or click on black and white, it's going to change your image into black and white. And I'm going to be explaining why we have to create this black and white layer in a few minutes or a few seconds from now. Come under the reds and add darken like that. So I'm just going to close this by just clicking right here. So the reason for doing this is because remember skin retouching is more of a blending and even skin tones together and harmonizing them. So when I zoomed, the, when I zoomed in this image, you notice that we have an even skin tones and we can right now see them well. Unlike when we had the colored version of the image. So come and turn this on. You can now see uh, the uneven tones in the image. So after doing so, come and select your color or skin tones layer. Because we now want to blend or even out the skin tones in this very image. So in order to even out the skin tones in the image, we are going to come and get a tool that is going to be helping us to harmonize or blend these uh, rough skin tone transitions in this very image. And in order to do that, we're going to come right to uh, under the brushes and right click and look for a mixer brush tool. So this is not your ordinary brush. Come and right click and look for uh, a mixer brush tool. So I'm going to turn off. You can see when your cap ski is on, uh, your tool is always going to turn into a cross-like icon. So make sure you turn off the caps key to get back the tool the way it is meant to be. Then we are going to come right to right on this option. So this is why you have to set uh, your brush uh, to really affect this image really nice and well. So come right down and drop down. Make sure it is a clean brush. 
So we just want the brush to be really clean. It's like when you're painting and you want to start and maybe the brush you had for a previous session is dirty. So you just have to clean up that brush. Then we have two options right here. We have the very first option is load the brush after each and every stroke. And the second option is clean the brush after each and every stroke. We have to select the second option simply because every time we are blending we don't want the brush to carry along any color from one area and paint it on another area that is why we have selected the option for cleaning the brush after each and every stroke after doing that make sure you select your wetness so this is where you have to regain or have that natural skin textures in your images so if at all your wetness is maybe at a hundred percent and you happen to paint over this image it is going to be really adding so much wetness that is going to maybe dilute the textures from the image remember we just want to have that nice and realistic skin textures like the people that use dodge, uh, micro dodging and burning for retouching we just want a natural looking image so for this case we're going to be using a wetness of around we're going to be using a wetness of Make sure you use the wetness of between 7 and 9 to have the best results out of, out of your skin retouching or frequent separation. After doing that, hit enter. Load we are going to be using 75 because we don't want the brush to have maybe a 100% load. Then make sure the mix is at 90% and the flow 100 because the mix has to re really harmonize this well. But we just don't want it to be overdone. That's why you have to reduce it slightly by 10% to have a mix of 90% and the flow 100%. So the other technique is, the other trick is make sure sample all layers is not selected. So the reason for this is because we, we are only working with the color or the skin tones in the image. So make sure you don't sample from this if at all you sample from this it is going to mean that when you start painting on the skin it is also going to be painting textures on the skin which we don't want so make sure sample oils is not selected then zoom out slightly okay zoom in slightly so when you're going to be blending your images make sure and always make sure you don't over zoom in or you don't blend your skin tones at such a zoomed in ratio make sure it is really a reasonable zoom so this zoom is really reasonable because even the person that is going to be looking at the image won't have to zoom into that percentage so we are going to increase on the size of the brush and we're going to be harmonizing the skin tones in the image so when you're harmonizing make sure you I blend the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone. And that area where they are really transitioning, make sure you just slightly harmonize them on that background between maybe the mid-tones and the highlights. Just harmonize that. So let me kick in and we start doing this. So we have some kind of mid-tones right here. Mix. And we have this area with mid-tones. And make sure you don't over mix a particular area for a long time because that what it is going to be doing it is going to be doubling the wetness effect on that area, meaning it is going to uh, double this effect and you'll end up losing out on the naturalness or the skin textures in the image. So I'm basically mixing the mid tones alone, the highlights alone. And the shadows alone and i'm not i'm mixing a particular area for a long time since i want to retain the textures so i'm going to show you guys the progress so far for this very uh, step so turn off the black and white layer so this is more of our help layer so you can see the before and the after before after we have just gotten rid of those uneven skin tone transitions in the image then you're going to come down and continue. So turn on the black and white layer. Make sure you're still selected or highlighted on the color or skin tones layer. And just come 
you can see you have these kind of shadows right here. I'm just trying to blend them out together. Then reduce on the size, depending on the area you're blending. And just blend this kind of mid-tones. Then we have a highlight right here. I'm just going to blend it alone. Then come this side and blend. Blend. And, and now we have a highlight right here. I'm just going to blend that highlight. So I'm just going to undo that because I felt like it was really uneven. So I'm just going to come and I'm just going to blend this area like that. So keep on checking on your progress as usual. So this is the before after, before after. You can see we have just blended the unevenness in the skin tones. So come and turn on the black and white layer and you're still on your color or skin tones layer. And now reduce on the size. We have we have to blend these shadows right here and harmonize them like that. So you can see I'm mixing the highlights alone, the mid-tones alone, and the shadows alone in the image. So after mix, mixing, sorry, on the shadows, I'm going to come to this highlight. I'm just going to uh, blend it. We have a highlight right there. Blend it alone. That shadow. So basically, uh, I hope you guys are really uh, taking notes and understanding each and every step that we are following for this a very tutorial so reduce on the size and come and blend these mid-tones so depending on the size you're trying to blend so hold down your basically i'm just holding down the left uh, button on the mouse or, or my, on my touchpad and i'm just going to uh, blend so if at all you feel like a particular area you want to blend is tiny or small you can now zoom in and just do that on the image like that so if at all you miss out on some areas <coughs> sorry i'm going to be showing you guys the second method you can use to fine tune the image even more so stay tuned and don't go away because you're going you're going to be uh, ending up a change retouch after this very tutorial so increase and now blend the neck. I have noticed that some retouchers uh, only retouch the face and they leave out uh, these vital vital areas like the neck and the chest area. So make sure you don't uh, leave out these areas because uh, these areas are really important and they also they are also part of the images you'll be retouching. So make sure you just don't do in an injustice to them. And also consider them when you're doing uh, the retouching. So come right to the hand. And also blend uh, the shadows alone. Then come to this highlight and just blend it into the image. Come this side and just harmonize that. Zoom in. And now reduce on the size. And continue basically blending the image. So I hope uh, my friends from uh, Nigeria are really understanding this tutorial even more because I've really taken time to explain each and every step. So if at all you feel like you're really uh, done uh, blending the image, you can zoom out and now turn off the black and white layer to see. We just want to see our progress for this image. So this is the image before after before after you can see what we have just done using the mixer brush tool so i feel like we have not uh, blended this area so i'm just going to do that without my black and white layer so i think uh, that is fine i'm going to delete the black and white layer because i no longer need it for the very second step for fine tuning this image even more so select it and hit the delete key on the keyboard then select our tones here because we are still dealing with the skin tones in this very image. So select the color or skin tones layer and come and get the lasso tool. So when you get the lasso tool, make sure your feathering is around 22 pixels and this very first option is highlighted. 
So this option shows new selection. So we are going to be making selections on to the skin of the model. Make sure and alias is selected and we have the lasso tool set up. So we're going to zoom in the image like that. So this time around, we are just going to zoom in all the way. And now we're going to make a selection on the skin. You can see this selection is going to be only on the skin and I'm not going to be selecting parts like the hair of the model and maybe the eyebrows or eyelashes. So, and the way I'm making this shape is I'm making it as the way a, part a particular part is shaped. So you can see how I've made this shape. I hope you can see that. So after doing that, we are just going to be refi refining or fine tuning the parts that I may have missed out. While I was, us while I was using the uh, mixer brush tool to blend the skin tones in this image, I'm going to come right here to filter and come to blur and come back to Gaussian blur. So under this, it is going to bring back the previous radius that we had. So after you have made the selection, make sure, make sure you zoom out the image to a reasonable zoom. So start moving this until you feel that the skin textures is really enough for you. So you shouldn't take it all the way up. So make sure you just move it while looking at the image until you feel like you're comfortable with the uh, skin textures in the image. So for this case, I'm going to move this. I think at 19, I have at around, I'm going to go with around 19. I think at 19, I have uh, the best textures for my image. So you shouldn't also cram this because these are going to be differing from one Im image to another and the camera you use. So you shouldn't be cramming this. So after doing so, hit OK. So we want to apply the effect on the rest of the image. So come and uh, you can hit Command D or Control D to deselect. And now you can now come and make a selection on the other parts like that. So right click and click on Gaussian Blur to apply the effect. So you can see the way I'm drawing my shapes is the way light has fallen on that particular area. So come and draw this shape on the chin area like that. So right click and click on Gaussian Blur. So you should resist from selecting uh, maybe the boundaries of your images because it's going to be sampling colors from those areas. You can see this shape I just made right here is not all the way towards the edge of the image. So right click and click on Gaussian Blur. And if at all you feel the effect is too much on a particular area, come and click Shift Control F or Shift Command F and it's going to bring this option come and reduce on the opacity of that effect on a particular area. So basically that is how we use the this method for using the lasso tool method. I know there are so many methods for using this for frequency separation or skin retouching, but I found out like when you do combine these two methods, they are really a powerful a tool for skin uh, retouching. So I'm just going to do that. So you can now apply it on the rest of the image, but usually I would advise that you only and only apply it on the face because it re seems to have more textures than the rest of the image generally. So let's see the before and after for our uh, skin retouching for this image. You can see the before, after, before, after. You have just blended or harmonized the skin tones in this very image. Let me zoom in so that you guys can see the before after. You can see we have retained the skin textures and they have really remained intact. So let's just apply the Gaussian Blur right here because we hadn't applied it on that area. And let's also just refine these uh, mid-tones. So like that. So what I want to do, I'll show you guys uh, the dodging and burning. So basically, what dodging and burning is all about is we enhance the highlights and the shadows in a particular image. So, dodging and burning is enhancing or contouring the image basically. So, we're going to be using curves for dodging and burning. So, this 
method of dodging and burning is a global dodging and burning method. So we're going to come right here to <coughs> adjustments and create a new curves adjustment layer. Then we are going to make a midpoint and move up like that until the image starts to look really uh, bright like that. So close this. Make sure the mask is selected. Yeah, I hope you guys are really understanding each and everything I'm using for this tutorial. Make sure this mask is selected. Hit Ctrl or Command I to hide that effect. And after doing so, come and double click. So when we are brightening an area, we'll be dodging. And when we are darkening an area, we'll be a burning. So we just brighten that curves. So we are going to name that dodge. And we're going to do the same for the darkening. So come back to curves. Make a midpoint and darken until the image starts looking really underexposed. Make sure this is selected. Before you can do that, let's name that burn. So come back and select this white mask and we want to hide this effect. Remember in Photoshop, white hide white reviews and black hide so we want to hide this effect from the image so hit ctrl or command i on the keyboard to hide that effect so we're going to put uh, these two in a group by selecting both and hitting ctrl or command g and you're going to name that group dodge and burn like that so after doing so i'm going to open up this group then come to the dodge layer. So under this layer, make sure you turn off the caps key to get back your tool. I'm going to come right to the brushes and I'm going to get the normal brush tool. This time around, we are not using our mixer brush tool. This is the normal brush tool. So we want to set up this tool. So make sure the hardness, it is a soft round brush. Hardness at zero and hit enter. Opacity 100, flow 100, smoothening or smoothing at 0%. Then we are going to zoom in this image like that. Then we are going to be looking for an area that has highlights in this image that we want to enhance more. Remember, dodging is going to be enhancing more the highlights in the image. And burning is going to be enhancing the shadows in the image. And before you can do that, come and set this right here. So make sure you click on these two boxes to get black and white. So remember what I just showed you. White reveals and black hides. That's why it hit the effect. So we want to reveal that effect using a white brush. So you're just going to start drawing lines, very tiny lines, everywhere we have a highlight in the image. So we're just going to draw a line. We have a highlight right there. Then we have a highlight. Then we're just going to draw a highlight right there. Then draw one right there. So we are basically drawing lines on ev every area that has a highlight in this very image. So we have a highlight or highlights right there. Then we are going to be doing the same for our burning. So come and select the burn. Zoom in and look for the area with uh, shadows or meant to have shadows. You can now, you can even simply turn off the frequency separation to see those areas that had shadows. And now come and draw, simply draw lines on those areas. So this method is for dodging and burning by using lines. If at all, you may be wondering what I am doing. I'm just basically trying to enhance the image by just drawing lines simply. So I'm just going to come and draw a line right there. So I think that is fine. So I'm going to turn back the frequency separation layer on. And I'm going to make sure the burn is selected the burn layer, make sure the mask is selected, come to window and come to, right down to properties. I hope I still have your attention guys. So under this we have density and feather. 
So come right here to a feather and start moving this. So when you start moving the feather option, it is going to uh, start blending or making this line disappear into the skin of our model. So let's move this and you're going to be noticing that it's going to start disappearing into uh, the skin like that. So I think at around 70 we have made this line disappear into the skin. You can see the before after, before after. Then you're going to come and select the dodge and do the same until uh, this has disappeared into uh, the skin. Basically we're just adding shape or dimension to the model's face. So you can see the before and after for our dodge and the before and after for our burn. So if at all you feel like uh, the effect is too much onto the image, come and select maybe for our burn because I feel it is too much right here. Select it and you can just come and reduce on the opacity like that. So you can see the before and after for our burn. So basically you have just added a shape or dimension to the model's face. So you can see the overall before and after for our dodging and burning. So what I would like to do, I would like to color grade this image before we can do the eye and teeth whitening for the model. So we're going to come right to selective color. So I want to first of all uh, darken the darks in the image. I'm going to come under blacks and I'm going to move the black slider to really darken the darks in all the blacks in the image. Then I'm going to come right to the reds. And since I want to get rid of the magentas right here on the neck area, I'm going to come to the magenta and I'm just going to move it towards uh, the greens like that. So you can see when I turn it all the way down, you can see it adds greens into the image. But I'm just going to be uh, doing a little bit of that. Then I'm also going to come to my yellows and I'm also going to reduce on the magentas in my yellows uh, to get rid of that kind of a reddish kind of feel to the image. I think that is too much. Negative one is going to be doing. I'm going to come back to the reds and I'm going to be adding some science to uh, the image like that to around negative three. So you can see the before and after for our color grading. So I feel like this image is really uh, overexposed to my liking. I'm going to come right to my levels and add a little bit of contrast. I'm just going to push in this like that. I think at around negative uh, two is going to be doing. So uh, the rest of the adjustments can be done in camera. So what we are, we are going to be doing, we are going to put these two in a group by hitting Ctrl G to put them in a group. And I'm going to name that group color, color grade like that. You can see the before and after for our simple and subtle color grading. I'm going to come right down here. And before I can do so, let me create a stamp visible layer. So what, what, it, what this is going to be doing, it is going to be helping us to uh, create a screenshot for all who have done on this image. So in order to do that, I'm just going to come to my keyboard and I'm going to click Shift Alternate. Yeah. Shift Alternate Control E on the keyboard or Shift Alternate Command E on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. And I'm going to Duplicate that by hitting Ctrl or Command J to have a backup. Then I'm going to come back to filter and I'm going to come to camera raw filter like that. So after I have done so, I'm going to zoom into the image. So for this case, we just want to do some little bit of eye whitening uh, onto the model and do some further more color grading. So you can see we're going to come right to the adjustment brush tool. So we want to get this tool and only paint over. We don't want to affect the overall image. So we just want to target specific parts of the image. So I'm going to get the adjustment brush tool. So here is where you have to set up this tool. So for this case, we have color or yellowness in the eyes. So we have to look for the opposite of yellow on this temperature slider. And the opposite of yellow is going to be a blue. I'm going to move this tool. Don't try if at all. You move this all the way down. 
because you can always adjust this later on. Then after doing so, I'm going to put my tint to around 60 because I want to add some little bit of magenta to the eyes so that they can really look natural. So since I want the eyes to pop and really be vibrant, I'm going to push in my highlights to 3 and also my whites to 3. The rest I'm going to leave them at 0. Then since we have color in the white area of the eye or maybe the teeth, I'm going to come to the saturation and remove that color by desaturating towards around negative uh, 60. Negative 61. So when I'm doing when I'm done doing that, my brush is going to be set and I'm just going to come and, and I'm going to start painting over the white area of the eye like that. So make sure you only paint over on what should be white in the eye. So you shouldn't paint over this little corner because we all have that and it is not white. So make sure you don't paint over it. So come and zoom in. Hold down the space bar key and you can now hover around. And now let's do the teeth whitening right now. So we are basically painting over uh, this area. So if at all you make a mistake and paint over the skin, it is going to be removing color from that area. Like if at all I do this, you can see what it has done to this area. It has just desaturated the skin. So we don't want to do that. Hit Ctrl Z to undo. So you have to paint over each and every individual tooth alone to whiten that because remember even in teeth we have gums or lips that are really having another color that is not white and we don't want to affect that specific color on those areas so make sure you really you whiten a tooth at a time and just don't brush like overall because we don't want uh, to have really bad looking images after spending a lot of time doing our skin retouching so we are done whitening the teeth so i'm just going to zoom out so that you guys can see the before and after for the eye and teeth whitening so that, uh, before after before after so what we are going to be doing we are going, we are going to come to the basic adjustments and we're going to uh, scroll all the way down to calibration option so I feel like this image is really looking so much yellow. I'm going to come to my red primary and I'm just going to move it towards uh, the magentas like that. And I'm also going to come to my greens and I'm going to move it towards uh, the blue side like that. And after doing so, I'm going to come to my blue primary and I'm also going to I uh, reduce on my blue primary like that so you can see the before and after we really have uh, the image looking and it is really back to life so what i'm going to be doing basically i'm going to click ok because i've done color grading this image you can see the before and after before after so what i want to do i want to add a little bit of contrast to this image come right down here and come to brightness and contrast and I'm going to uh, move the contrast slider towards the right hand side to add some little bit more of contrast to this image so you can see the before and after it is not too much it is really a uh, subtle so basically this is all we have for our skin retouching so let's see the before and after hold down the alternate key and click on this background eye visibility icon you can see a before after before after before after you can see that the image is now looking beautiful and amazing so what i would love to do i want to show you guys how to export or save your images after retouching i know there are those cases whereby you after spending a lot of time editing your images and you export them they really change in color maybe when you post them or put them on a way different device so I want to show you guys the best way to export your, your images. So we are going to come right here to file. We are not going to be using save or save as. No, because these are the causes of that effect. Or that problem that you always face. So come to export. And come to export as. So when you come to export as. 
it is going to open this other window right into your Photoshop and you should really wait for it to load and your image is going to be right here in the preview so here you have your image and the details and how big it is then here we have the format so as usual I want my image to be a JPEG file so you can leave this but the quality should be at 100% then resampling should be at uh, by cubic sharper because I really want the image to be sharp when I post it or share it anywhere so I just want it to be sharp so I'm going to set my resample to by cubic sharper then come right the way, all the way down and I'm going to click embed color profile so make sure you select or check these two boxes and after you have checked them it is going to embed all the information that you have been able to put into this image first of all when you're color grading or retouching this image and after doing so come and click export and you can name this image maybe best of skin a retouching like that so after doing so select a location where you want your image to be saved and click save so it is going to take a few seconds and it's going to automatically close this window after it has uh, saved your image so basically our image has been saved into the folder that we chose to uh, or where to save this image so basically this has been an in-depth tutorial about skin retouching dodging and burning color grading eye and teeth whitening and how to import and export your images into photoshop i'm ronix from ronix photography i hope this is really going to impact and help you guys in your photography and skin retouching in general. I hope you like this video. Drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe if at all you're watching from this channel for the very, very first time. And don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating. Till next time.